everyone this is Nikki and I'm back again today with a video for you so I'm gonna look at the in the doghouse die set up close show you some quick and easy cards that you can do with this some people get a little overwhelmed with the amount of pieces so I want to take you through everything show you what it does in these two cards and that way you'll know what all these pieces go to okay I am going to start with cutting apart my die pieces. Now, when I cut apart die pieces, I love using these little snips that um, Cat Scrappiness has. They're super sharp. They do a great job of getting into these teeny tiny areas. And when I'm cutting apart my dies, I try to cut pretty much everything apart and I want to set it aside and not lose it. Look at this teeny little square here. You don't want to lose that. So I do two, one of two things. I either grab myself a magnetic sheet and I put my die pieces on that or I use a coffee filter and I drop all the dies in the coffee filter so um, I'm gonna show you what is on this die I'm just gonna kind of call out the pieces so that you will know we've got our doghouse the doghouse has a roof that goes with it and then we have lots of embellishments so we have poop which is kind of funny um, we've got several paw prints we've got a food bowl we've got a tennis ball we have got a bone and then a lot of these other circular and square rectangle pieces that look like they're a little bit confusing on where they go are actually part of the fire hydrant which is why I'm going to put that together today for you in this video. I'm also going to put together the doghouse but I'm going to try to make most of the focus of this video how you assemble these dies. So I'll show you some of the ink blending and things like that just briefly but mainly I'm going to be working on showing you how these dies work. Okay, so here's all these pieces again on a white piece of paper so you can see them just a little bit better. I just wanted you to get an idea of how many options you get right here. Since this is about the dies, I just want to briefly mention what I did so you'll know. On the background, I used some Uncharted Mariner and some Tumble Glass and a little bit of Salty Ocean to create this ink blend. Then I stamped it with a dark black ink called VersaFine Claire Nocturne. And now I'm using clear embossing powder to make that sentiment really stand out. Check out how good that heat embossing looks. It just really makes this very shiny. This sentiment is from the new release as well. Um, I think it's super cute. I think this will end up being one card that I give my husband um, just because it can be kind of a cute anniversary card. Okay, so let's show you the fire hydrant pieces. I have the outline of the fire hydrant and then I have this little, you see that end piece? It fits right on the edges there. We've got this teeny little square that goes in the middle of the circle and the circle goes in the middle of the fire hydrant. So we're cutting all these little extra pieces. We also need these long skinny rectangles and all of this just makes our fire hydrant look really 3D, which is nice. Um, it just gives it a lot of different elements and is very impressive. These skinny rectangles fit as the base and they also fit across the top, you know, where it goes into a dome. It fits right there. I'll show you when I'm putting it together so you know for sure. So here are all the pieces I cut out. Yes, I have a few extras of different types, so that's in case I mess up doing the coloring. So I always color my pieces before I glue them together. I'm gonna start, and I'm gonna make this pretty simple, especially when using reds as Copics. A lot of times it's hard for me to get a whole lot of shading. So I'm going to use one color of red. It's the R29, I'll pop that up below. And then I'm gonna use one color of gray to give it some more shadows versus versus having to do much more shading. Of course, I will add, you know, on each detail, I will try to add more color towards the outside edge to give it that look. But when you're dealing with this small of pieces, it's pretty hard to shade. And also red in general is a little bit of a difficult color with Copics. The other thing that makes this process easier is having some tweezers. I could hold these pieces with my hands, but it would be difficult and I definitely would end up with red hands. So I'm using Cat Scrappiness's little um, tweezers that are, you know, they'll hold something, but also just the point on them. I can hold this piece of paper down, color it, and not worry that I'm going to have completely red hands. 
starting with my long rectangles I put that down on the bottom right there it just gives it a little bit more detail I'm gonna grab the other one and it fits right across the top like right before the dome of the fire hydrant starts so I'm gonna put it on and then we're gonna add the middle part of the fire hydrant so just be careful with your glue. You don't want it to kind of seep out and change any of your colors. So I've got a red marker to kind of fix what I need to. And if I like my edges to be solid red, so I'm always kind of going around and adding a little bit to them. And these two kind of like stacked rectangle looking pieces are what I'm gonna call the arms of the fire hydrant. I'm sure they really are something else, but that's what I'm gonna call them. Now I'm gonna call this the center circle. And then in the middle of the center, center circle, we're gonna add that teeny little square. I cut a second one of these squares to put around the fire hydrant to see if I wanted to put it on the top of the dome or on the sides. And I'll kind of show you what it looks like in both of those places. But I decided that I would leave them the way they are. I really liked how it was looking. So I ended up not doing this, but I feel like you could definitely add those extra little details if you wanted to do that. And here's how it looks on the final card. So cute. Great. I'll make sure to include everything that I've used in the description because I know we're skipping parts. This one, we're going to look at the doghouse card. So with this card, I used the roof, the doghouse, and then I cut a piece on my own. It doesn't come with the die set, but I just wanted to not be able to see the sky through the doghouse. So I wanted to have like a dark um, gray. So I cut my own piece and used a little ink blending to create the gray behind the door. Once I got that ink blended, I was able to put it behind the doghouse and then I'm just going to cut this down with my scissors and glue it on the back and it looks like it's just one piece. So very easy to do if you don't want to be able to see through your doghouse. Now, like I said, since this video is about the assembly, I'm not going to go into how I did this background, but I will include all the products used in the description below. So just know that. So I've got my doghouse. I've already glued my roof on the doghouse. So I need to get this set up on the card like I want it. And then I'm going to use the little dog bowl. Oh, such a cute little bowl. And then I've got one more die cut, which is a big bone. I'm going to put that on the front of the doghouse, kind of like his, instead of where his name could go, I'm going to put a big dog bone above it. And then all these little dog bone pieces are actually clay sprinkles from Cat Scrappiness. So I just stuck them onto the bowl to add some extra dimension and they look so cute. And then I took some of those clay um, sequins, or I guess clay confetti, and I decided that my dog, even though the dog's not in this picture, has been piling up. He's been hoarding bones here. So we're gonna make a pile of bones in his doghouse, and he also has them in his bowl. I just could see my dog doing this, so <laughs> I think it was a really cute idea. So I'm gonna make a pile of bones for him, and then that's really all it is to these two cards. Like I said, I will include everything in the description so you'll know what all I used and hopefully this answered any questions if you've been looking at this die set and thinking it's too many pieces or just wasn't quite sure how it went together hopefully this will help you out if you will please make sure you hit like and subscribe on the cat scrappiness channel I'm so happy to be here with you today and I can't wait to see you again soon have a great day bye